Hi, my name is Dr. Kim Allen Williams. I'm the Chief of Cardiology at Rush University in Chicago, and this is Million Dollar Debunk. You need meat for protein. That's just a basic fact. Well, it turns out that if you look at mammalian physiology, what you see is that most of the large land mammals are vegetarians. And the protein that you're getting by eating an animal actually came from plants. And it turns out that animal protein is toxic to kidneys and vegetable protein saves kidneys. So please take a look. You'll find out that vegetable protein is much safer. Animal products aren't bad for you. Stop lying. My family and I have eaten meat and dairy our whole lives and we're doing just fine. Not everybody gets disease states early. Animal products, basically, if you con consider the entire population, they actually do have their toxicity. If you want to have the most life within your life that is less disease, then you try to avoid the animal products as much as possible. Humans are always going to eat meat because it tastes good. Deal with it. That is something that I've heard multiple times from patients. It usually doesn't have a good outcome, but that's because I'm a cardiologist and they usually are presenting to me after the heart attack stroke. If you look at the data, you really just have to make a decision. How long do you want to live? How much life do you want to have during your life? And is there any food that tastes better than your health? Food isn't medicine. Why do people keep saying that? Without pills or surgery, most people would literally die. That is very true. Our medicine system is amazing in the United States. So why are our outcomes so bad? It's because of the lifestyle of the people who we serve. So if you take that seriously, food has to be medicine. Vegans need to take a ton of supplements just to survive. You absolutely have to have B12, no question about it. And you have three choices. You can eat the dirt yourself, which most of us don't want to do. We can eat the animal that ate the dirt, uh, which many of us find objectionable. Or you could actually go ahead and take a B12 supplement, which uh, is the easier of the three to do. I gave up meat for one month and got diagnosed with severe anemia. Now I'm eating meat again and my doctor says I'm in perfect health. Giving up meat for just one month, usually you would not, unless you're bleeding, get down on your iron stores. And you should be taking a B12 uh, supplement and folic acid is really, really high. And those are the three main causes of, uh, of anemia. Vegan burgers are full of weird ingredients. They're no better for you than regular bur burgers. I can't exactly agree with that. We know what the burgers do. Everyone really should go into their search engine and look up called TMAO. And when you're eating a burger, your TMAO level is gonna rise. That correlates with heart attack, stroke, death, heart failure. And the veggie burgers will always have that over an actual burger. You need cow's milk for calcium and strong bones. Without it, you'll more likely uh, to get osteoporosis. Okay, well, milk actually has a lot of growth hormone in it. You actually buffer animal protein metabolism and the acids that it produces, the ones that hurt the kidneys. Well, it turns out that it hurts the bones as well. You leach calcium out of the bones to try to buffer those acids. I'm eating a juicy steak. Mmm, so good. Wow. Too much at stake to eat steak is what I like to tell my patients. We really do struggle with people not understanding what the components of cow meat actually are. If you're eating uh, meat from a carcass, you're basically going to develop the type of bacteria in your GI tract that cause inflammation. Have the guts to go vegan. I absolutely love cheese. I could never get it up. Um, give it up. Give me. Let me, let me, I'm just not going to talk about the game changers. <laughs> Part of the reason that you can't give it up is because there are the morphones in there. And there's a nice book by Neil Barnard called The Cheese Trap that goes through the biochemistry of cheese. It's a lot safer to go with the plant-based cheeses. Fried chicken is good for the soul. <laughs> so I had to put on my South Side of Chicago accent for a second. African-Americans lead the pack in terms of of cardiovascular mortality. If it wasn't for the African-Americans, heart disease would not be number one. And so to use soul food as a reason and equate that with health really doesn't uh, stand the test of any data. Heart disease runs in my family. There's nothing I can do about that, so I may as well enjoy life and eat what I want. A lot of what we're doing, what we're dealing with, has to do with the fact that we learn to eat from our parents. And so the heart disease runs in the family because people are eating the same things and have similar lifestyles. It's probably more environmental than it is genetic. High blood pressure runs in my family. None of us are overweight, so it's not a diet thing. 
Well, it has to do with the blood vessels resistance uh, and the kidneys responses to uh, a lot of environmental factors predict, um, uh, predictably what we eat. And so if we back off of the animal protein, go with the vegetable protein, typically we'll see a drop in the blood pressure. If being vegan was good for you, my doctor would have recommended it or be vegan himself. It turns out that our, our medical system for education largely excludes nutrition. And so I would love to tell you that your doctor is an expert, but odds are they really aren't, unless they're vegan. Nothing is more nutritionally complete than a nice piece of steak. Think about where that steak is coming from. It actually is a sentient being that feels the torture. You're taking a piece of it, which is toxic to human bodies, and ingesting it so that you develop the higher cholesterol, the more inflammation, and all of the diseases that are associated with eating animal products. I'm on the keto diet and I've lost 20 pounds. It's amazing. I always tell my keto patients to be careful of the ultimate weight loss. As that you get more and more keto, the death rate goes up. If you're gonna do it for a day or two, or that's probably not a big, the biggest deal. Well, not for you, maybe for the animals, but it certainly is going to be a major cardiovascular problem if you're gonna do that long term. Veganism is extreme. Yes, it is, no question. But it's the kind of extreme uh, measure that's required if we want to get out from under the issues that we've had with COVID and with cardiovascular disease. We are living in a dual pandemic, all of which would be tamped down dramatically if everyone started today to do a whole food plant-based diet. So vegans are mostly nutrient deficient that really just isn't biochemically the case. The best way to get nutrients is actually uh, to actually have a variety of vegetables and that can include beans, nuts, grains, and seeds. And these, this variety will give you the nutrients that you need for optimum human growth and human health. Eating plant-based only makes you feel good in the short term because it's not good for your health long term. Well, I've only been at it for about 20 years, so maybe that's not long enough term. But I can tell you that there's actually a lot of long-term data out there saying that this is a pretty good way to live and a pretty good way to live long. Whoa, vegan doctors are biased because they care about animals more than humans. I had never quite heard that one before. Most of the vegan doctors are really concerned about human health. If anything, I would say we need to be more concerned about animal rights and social issues in the planet uh, I have grandkids. I would love for them to have a planet. Okay, so why wouldn't I go vegan? Oh, thank you, thank you.